Are you scrolling through the auction house, desperately choosing which spells you can maybe skip for now just because they're too expensive? Are you tired of people laughing at your gear in your XP parties? When starting your journey in Vanadil, things can be really brutal, especially early on. As you progress and level through the game, making guild becomes a little easier as a lot more options open up to you as far as making a steady income. Fishing is available early on and is a foolproof way to make a steady income, helping you bridge the gap to later levels while ensuring you're not gimped in your adventures. This guide will focus on the basics of leveling fishing, the optimal camps, baits and rods to make this a pain-free process as much as possible and maximize your profits. Little disclaimer as always, this video is recorded and tailored for the Wings XI server and the camps and strategies offered here might not apply to your era or server. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the video. First, let's cover the basics. Fishing is a skill that's essentially available right at the start of your journey at level 1. In order to fight against botting, the Wings XI devs made a level requirement of 20 in order to be able to fish as much as your heart desires. You are still able to fish pre-level 20, but after a few bites you will not be able to hook anything at all. For this reason, I highly recommend at least leveling a job to level 20 before going through with this guide as the daily cap will stop you right in your tracks. The fishing guild is located in the southwest quadrant of Port Windurst and you will need to go show one of your prizes to the guildmaster every 10 levels in order to boost your level cap. The list of fish you need to trade in per rank is listed on the guide in the description of this video. You could potentially fish all of them, but in my experience it's easier to simply buy the fish off the auction house as they are quite cheap in most instances. Now let's talk about the basic gear to get started. While the fishing gear at level 1 helps a lot, it is not mandatory in order to start skilling up and even turning up a good profit. For the later camps after level 20, the strategies shown in this guide require you to have the fisherman's suit, gloves, legs and boots on. You will easily be able to afford the gear once you are through with the first camp on this list. Speaking of the first camp, we will start our leveling journey right here in West Round 4 at the Nightswell. This is just east of the outpost which makes traveling to and from the pond very easy and efficient. The rod you will need is a Hume fishing rod and the bait we're looking to use is insect paste. This will grant you a 50% chance of reeling in moat carps roughly. If you cannot afford the paste you can stick to little worms for now which are incredibly cheap but will lower your chances of reeling in the carps slightly. This is your bread and butter camp in all honesty as the carps sell very well on the auction house or even simply by yelling. You will always find a buyer as the ludicrous quantity needed in order to obtain the Lu Shang's fishing rod, one of the best rods in the game, will always make sure there is an interested buyer. At the moment of the release of this video, they fetch around 5k per stack. Because of the cheap cost of the paste, you can easily make between 20 to 30k profit on a single stack of baits. This is how you win while fishing at low levels. This camp alone will be able to finance a lot of your early game spells, gear or anything you really need in order to gear up your jobs and get your leveling done. A lot of the later fishing camps are mostly used to skill up as not a lot of them will amount you the same amount of gil per hour profit, until you reach the later levels that is. You will need to stay here from level 0 to 11, potentially a little longer if you need the money. After level 11 though, you will stop having skill ups and you'll have to take your new sense of fishing somewhere else. Make sure to bring one carp to the fishing guild in Windurst once you reach level 10 in order to increase your cap and reach the recruit rank. From level 11 to 20, the camp will move slightly to East Round 4. You want to set up on this river right next to Sandoria. Your targets this time are Shevel Salmons. You want to use the Alcyon fishing rod with the Fly Lure. You want to watch out for shining trouts early on as they can snap your line, making you lose your lure. To be safe, cancel when you see the message, you're fairly sure you don't have enough skill to reel this one in. The salmon doesn't sell for much on the auction house or two vendors, but will offer very decent skill ups. Make sure to keep at least one as you'll need it as your item requested to rank up to initiate at the fishing guild. 
For level 20 to 33, you will want to move to Carpenter's Landing, the one that zones into North Sandoria, not the one near Jugner Forest. This is where having the Fisherman set becomes mandatory for this strategy, or you won't be able to reel anything in without it. The carps you fished should have more than covered the cost of the set by this point. You will want to use the All Seed Rod again with Insect Paste, especially for the first few levels. This will isolate the Dark Bass, a level 33 fish. Once you reach level 24, you could swap to a Flyler in order to get a chance of catching Shining Trouts, which will grant you a few more skill ups. Rinse, repeat until level 33. From level 33 to 41, we will move to Zerun Mines. We will want to make our way from Bastok Mines and simply talk to the NPC in order to open the gate for the bridge that leads to Koroloka Tunnel. You will want to use the Alcyon Rod again with a Warm Lure. The fish we're looking for in this case is the Black Eels. These skill up fairly well and will fetch about 2k a stack to NPCs. For the level 41 to 55, we will now move to Buburimu Peninsula, right on the border of the ocean. For the early levels, you will want to use your Alcyon Rod with a Robber Rig in order to catch some Shal Shells. Once you are level 43-ish, you can swap the bait to a minnow in order to catch some blue tails. For both of these, make sure to cancel any bad feelings you get to avoid losing your lure. In all honesty, these are very slow to skill up, but they sell for about 2.8k a stack to vendors, so they can net you some quick gill while working on your skill ups. Another option around level 48 is to move to Yutunga Jungle in any of the little ponds to fish El Shimo Newts, using the Alcyon Rod again and a Frog Lure. You will get more skill ups, but sadly the newts don't stack, so expect to either drop them or make a lot of trips back and forth to town in order to make this viable. As for levels 55 to 62, we will move a little bit closer to Windurst and travel to the lake in eastern Sarutabaratura called the Lake Tepokalipuka. Sorry for the horrible pronunciation of this. You'll want to use your trusty Halcyon Rod with a Fly Lure in order to catch some Crescent Fish, which sell quite well to NPCs, stacking for about 4.8k and will give you really good skill ups. As usual, make sure to cancel any and all bad feelings that you will get and you should level in no time. As for level 62 to 67, we will move to Battalia Downs on the edge of the map on the north side. You will want to use your trusty Halcyon Rod again with meatballs in order to catch some silver sharks. The bite rate is kind of low but the skill up rate is quite good. A stack of those goes for about 8k on the auction house at the moment of doing this video, so you can make a very good profit while getting your skill ups. This is where you start really making a lot more money than you would while fishing moat carps in the night's well. As for level 67 to 75, we will move to North Gustaberg and fish into Draken Fall. The fishing spot is accessible by walking through Dangrof Wadi only, so it's quite a pain to go to. To make things even worse, the fish we're looking for, the Gavial fish, does not stack. The bite rate is around 30% and the skill ups are very good at least, so it's worth the trouble overall. They sell for about 500 gil per fish to vendors and about 5k each on the auction house, so you can decide to either make the run back and forth or simply toss the fish to maximize your skill ups. As for level 75 to 96, we will move to Kfim Highland at the lake in order to fish the very lucrative Black Soul. You can use the composite rod with a sinking minnow for the lure. You will lose a lot of the souls though as the fish is too small for the rod, but if you use the Alcyon, you risk a lot of snap lines and lost lures. This is where most true fishers will start farming for their Lu Shang's rod that I mentioned earlier in this guide. Having the Lu Shang's will increase the bite rate a lot and will turn this camp into a steady gill making machine. A stack goes for about 11k on the auction house and sells very well. You can obtain the Lu Shang's rod by completing the quest, the rivalry. You will need to trade 10,000 carps to either Jule or Galijo in Port Sandoria. Yes, 10,000. Thousand. This is where the true grind for endgame fishing starts. You can alternatively buy the rod from someone else or buy the carps in order to get your Lu Shangs. The last camp to finally reach level 100 is in Olton Mavalpolos. 
you will want to fish in the center lake for some armored pishis. You will need to use your Lushangs along with a sinking Mino. The fish here doesn't stack but will provide decent skill ups until you reach max level. Well guys, that's it for my fishing guide. Keep in mind there are definitely other strategies in camps in order to raise your fishing than this guide. The information here is basically just a combination of existing guides, personal experience, and strategies discussed from other players on the server. The link of the written guide I used to make this video by Low will be in the description of the video. Huge thanks to all my fellow Link Shell mates on Good Morning Everyone for helping me while discussing these strategies, and a special thanks to Siru for helping me capture footage on all the advanced camps. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Final Fantasy XI content coming in the near future. If you feel like I've missed anything or maybe you have some additional tips and tricks for other players, please leave them down in the comment below. Thanks a lot for watching and happy fishing!